to all today we will be discussing about the tools used in the genetic engineering before starting the topic i will be liking to say you that if you want to study the biotechnology or the genetic engineering in a proper way then we have to study this unit under three chapters number one is the tools used in genetic engineering which is very important because without tools the genetic engineering is not possible so very first we will be studying about the tools used in genetic engineering and if you know the tools of the genetic engineering then half of the things are done because this chapter is very important and the second chapter is the recombinant dna technology okay that is the r dna technique and in the third chapter we will be discussing about the applications of the biotechnology so all together we can say that to study the biotechnology we have to study three chapters tools used in genetic engineering the second one is the recombinant dna technology or the r dna technique and the third one is the applications of the biotechnology okay so very first we are starting with the tools of the genetic engineering you must know that there are all together four tools used in genetic engineering the very first tool is the enzymes there are a lot of enzymes which are used in the genetic engineering which are helpful at various places number 2 is the foreign dna this is the another tool foreign dna is basically the gene of interest you can call it as alien dna you can call it as source dna you can call it as target dna you can call it as desired dna right etc so these are the name given to the foreign dna so once again i am repeating foreign dna target dna source dna passenger dna desired dna gene of interest are one and the same thing so the second tool is the foreign dna the third tool is the vector dna the vector dna is also called as the vehicle dna okay because it carries the alien dna that's why it is called as the vehicle dna or the vector dna and the fourth one is known as the host cell in the coming videos will be dealing with all these uh, tools used in the genetic engineering okay today we are going to discuss about the very first tool of the genetic engineering and that is known as the enzymes okay so all together we can divide the enzymes into five categories which will be used in the process of the genetic engineering and these five categories of the enzymes are the first one is known as the lysing enzymes the second category is known as the cleaving enzymes the third is the synthesizing enzymes the fourth one is known as the joining enzymes and the fifth one is known as the alkaline phosphatase enzyme okay so lysing enzymes cleaving enzymes synthesizing enzyme joining enzymes and the alkaline phosphatase enzyme in today's video we will be discussing about the lysing enzymes and a portion of the cleaving enzymes okay so first one lysing enzymes first of all you must know what do you mean by lysis because the lysing word is coming from the lysis word or the lyse word lyse means what lysis or lyse means breakdown okay means lysing enzymes are the enzymes which are actually digesting the cell wall okay so those enzymes which digest the cell wall are all together called as the lysing enzymes okay they are basically concerned with the breakdown of the cell wall okay uh, lysis means what the breakdown right not only the cell wall the these lysing enzymes can also break down certain macromolecules such as the rna protein etc okay now what is the use of this lysing enzymes in the genetic engineering or the biotechnology you must know why there is need of the breakdown of the cell wall and the other macromolecules so we must know that dna is present inside the nucleus for the genetic engineering the gene of the interest or the dna is very important without the isolation of the dna right we cannot study the genetic engineering okay because we need the dna okay we need the gene of interest now the problem is that the dna is present inside the nucleus and nucleus is surrounded by the various boundaries 
such as the cell wall. So, if we want to obtain the DNA from the cell, it is quite necessary that nucleus must be exposed because if the nucleus will not be exposed, it will be not possible for we people to isolate the DNA from a cell. So nucleus must be exposed. To expose the nucleus, we have to break down the or we have to lyse the cell wall with the help of the appropriate enzymes. And these enzymes are called as the lysing enzymes. Okay. Now, let's have a look here that if we want to isolate the DNA from a bacterial cell. Okay, if we want to isolate DNA from a bacterial cell. So we know very well that bacterial cell is actually surrounded by the cell wall and the bacterial cell wall is made up of mucopeptides or peptidoglycan. So if we want to lyse the bacterial cell wall to obtain the DNA from it, then we'll be using a lysing enzyme and that lysing enzyme will be called as the lysogyme. Okay, so bacterial cell wall can be lysed with the help of the lysogyme enzyme. Similarly, if we want to isolate the DNA from a fungal cell, so we know very well that fungal cell is surrounded by a cell wall which is made up of the chitin. So if we want to lyse the fungal cell wall which is made up of the chitin, then we have to use a lysing enzyme and that lysing enzyme will be called as the chitinase enzyme. Chitinase will dissolve the chitin. And the third one, if we want to isolate the DNA from the plant cell wall, we know very well that the plant cell wall is made up of what? Cellulose. So to lyse the plant cell wall made up of the cellulose, we will be using a cellulase enzyme. So these lysogyme, chitinase, cellulase, all these are the lysing enzymes which are having the role to lyse or to break down the cell wall. Not only this, for the purpose of the genetic engineering, the DNA or the gene of the interest must be present in a purified form. But the problem is that, that when we are isolating the DNA from a cell, so it is not in the pure form. It is actually associated with certain macromolecules such as RNA protein. But there is no need of the RNA or the protein for the genetic engineering purpose. We need the DNA in a pure form. So if we want to remove, if we want to remove the RNA, right, which is associated with the DNA, we can also use ribonuclease. Ribonuclease also comes under the category of the lysing enzyme because it lyses the RNA. So ribonuclease, ribonuclease can also be used. Not only this, if the DNA is also associated with protein, but for genetic engineering, we are not needing the protein. We need DNA in the pure form. So this protein must also be lysed or it must also be removed. So we can use a protease enzyme to remove the protein. So all these enzymes, whether it is a lysogyme, chitinase, cellulase, ribonuclease and protease enzyme, all are actually coming under the category of the lysing enzymes. Okay, so these lysing enzymes are meant for breakdown of the cell wall or to lyse the other macromolecules which are associated with the DNA. So these are the important enzymes. So this is the first category of the enzyme known as the lysing enzymes. Now, the next one is known as the cleaving enzymes. Now, what is the difference between a lysing enzyme and a cleaving enzyme? So, the lysing enzymes were actually breaking down the cell wall or were digesting the macromolecules, okay? But these cleaving enzymes, what is the meaning of the cleave? Cleave means to cut. Cleave means to cut. Means these cleaving enzymes are actually responsible for cleaving or cutting the DNA at the specific sites. These are meant for cutting or cleaving the DNA at the specific sites. And these cleaving enzymes are actually categorized into three categories. Okay. Exonuclease, endonuclease and restriction endonuclease. Okay. These restriction endonucleases are a type of the endonucleases. You know? So don't be confused that uh, these are different. 
restriction endonucleases are a type of the endonucleases okay they are a type of endonuclease enzyme so altogether we can say that cleaving enzymes can be categorized into three exonuclease endonuclease and restriction endonuclease okay in today's video we'll be discussing about the exonuclease and the endonuclease and in the next video we'll be dealing with the restriction endonuclease enzyme which are very 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 important tool used in the genetic engineering okay so very first what are exonucleases as the name is indicating exo means out and endo means inside okay so exonucleases are the type of the cleaving enzymes which cleaves or cuts the dna from the ends as the name is indicating means they are not cutting the dna from the center they are actually cleaving or cutting the dna from the ends what i want to say that dna is having the 5 prime end and the 3 prime end means i want to say that exonucleases are a type of the enzymes which can remove the nucleotides from either side either ends may they may cut the dna at the 5 prime end or they may cut they may cut the dna at the 3 prime end so they can cut the dna from either of the end 5 prime or 3 prime end ultimately we can say exonucleases are the enzymes which can cut the dna at the ends okay see you can see here that i have made a double stranded dna and with the help of the exonuclease enzyme we have cleaved the dna at this position see here we have cleaved here so this much portion of the dna is removed or from this much portion nucleotides have been removed with the help of the exonuclease enzyme okay so we can see here that this enzyme has cut the dna at the ends now coming to the another one known as the endonuclease enzyme now what are endonuclease enzyme as the name is indicating exo was cutting the dna at the ends and endo is cleaving the dna from the center it is cleaving the dna from the center we can also say that these are the enzymes which can cut the dna from anywhere other than the ends means they are not cutting endonucleases are not cutting the dna from the ends they can cut the dna from anywhere from the center right but not at the ends so they cut the dna from anywhere other than the ends say for i have made a double stranded dna right and i have applied endonuclease enzyme so you can see that this endonuclease enzyme has not cut the dna at ends it has not cut the dna from the 5 prime end or the 3 prime end you can see that it has cleaved the dna it has cleaved the dna right it has cleaved the dna from the center and that's why they are called as the endonuclease enzyme so today we have discussed about uh, uh, some enzymes and in the next video we will be dealing with the third type of the enzyme which is very important one known as the restriction endonuclease enzyme so keep watching uh, if you want to take the screenshot of this video you can take